The purpose of this video is to introduce best practices for all athletes while exercising, especially during intense workouts, with a special focus on the impact of exercising with sickle cell trait. You should be aware of your daily health status and related conditions that could impact your training, such as sickle cell trait status, asthma and cardiac conditions, acute illness, lack of sleep, suboptimal nutrition, as well as any relevant medications being taken. Injury is a possibility during all athletic activities. Even though conditioning sessions and high intensity practice sessions should be designed to reduce the likelihood of injury and optimize your performance, athletes in these situations have experienced significant physical distress, collapsed, and even died. NCA members often adopt rules and best practices that are intended to protect your well-being during these activities. In an effort to reduce injury and illness, NCAA student athletes are required to complete a medical examination prior to participation. During this process, the NCAA also requires each student athlete to confirm their sickle cell trait status. Division III rules allow you to participate while awaiting results from the laboratory, provided that you complete additional mandatory education regarding the risks, impact, and precautions associated with sickle cell trait. Your institution will explain this process more in depth as it pertains to their policies. Sickle cell trait occurs when an individual inherits a gene for sickle hemoglobin from one parent and a gene for normal hemoglobin from another parent. The sickle hemoglobin gene is more common in people of African, Mediterranean, Middle Eastern, or Far Eastern descent. Sickle cell trait is present in athletes at all levels of competition and ethnicities, including professional and Olympic sports. Because sickle cell trait does not make you sick, it is possible for you to have it and not know it. I discovered my sickle cell trait uh, status during my sophomore season. Um, I had a really bad cramping episode in the first game. It was pretty unusual. Uh, I came in before halftime, and uh, by the time I got to the training room, I couldn't walk. My body had completely locked up. I recovered after that, went into the second game, similar issues, not as bad as the first. And then we had our bye week and we had a pretty long grueling practice. And then our training staff and some other people noticed that I wasn't myself and I was really fatigued and stuff like that. And Craig, our athletic, head athletic trainer, came up to me and asked me if I had been tested for sickle cell. And I said I wasn't sure. And then we went through the testing and found out that I indeed carried the trait. Under normal conditions, student athletes with sickle cell trait can train and compete in athletics at the highest level of sport and can lead a healthy life without fear of developing complications. Exercise and sport are safe and, in fact, may be somewhat protective in individuals with sickle cell trait. Sickle cell trait is a lifelong condition that will not turn into sickle cell disease but will be maintained over time. Serious medical problems associated with sickle cell trait are rare even during intense training. However, some athletes with sickle cell trait have experienced significant physical distress, collapse, and even die. Any athlete can collapse or experience exertional rhabdomyolysis during intense exercise. While most return to sport over time, athletes with sickle cell trait seem to have more problems recovering from rhabdomyolysis and should be attended to diligently and monitored closely. The greatest risk of exertional collapse for all athletes is during conditioning sessions and the start of new practice periods. Your workout goal is to optimize your physical efforts while minimizing the risk of injury and illness. Workout design should consider your individual medical condition, skills, abilities, and conditioning level. Progressing your exercise time and intensity slowly during a two-week period before preseason can help your body acclimate to the exercise load and prepare for the rigors of the sports season. All athletes and coaches can monitor distress by watching an athlete's posture during the workout. This color graphic depicts green, yellow, and red situations which correspond to a series of postures showing an athlete moving into a distressful and serious condition. Athletes unable to stand on their own from a kneeling position or having trouble walking normally under their own control during recovery should raise suspicion of distress and additional medical intervention should be considered. Taking a knee during a workout can be a universal sign for the need for additional recovery. Exercise should not be used as a form of punishment in any athlete experiencing physical distress. 
To ensure optimal performance, you should stay hydrated by consuming water throughout the day. Do not wait until you're thirsty. Drink early in the workout, such as eight ounces of water every 15 minutes during exercise, and incorporate sports drinks when possible. Replace your fluids lost during exercise by keeping track of your weight lost. In general, 20 ounces of fluid should be replaced for every pound lost during the workout. Monitoring your urine color is another way to assess your hydration. Lighter color is better. Dark brown urine should be reported immediately. Knowledge of sickle cell trait status can be a gateway to taking simple precautions that may prevent exercise collapse and allow for optimal performance. Do you know your sickle cell trait status?